All right, what's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, Yosh Down. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's Chelsea news video. Today, I'm gonna be talking about January transfers and posing a theoretical question to you guys about a potential attacker. As the January window edges ever closer, Frank Lampard is making more and more noises about how really he probably wants to make transfers. Now the media has speculated about defenders, wingers, a striker, and there's been many linked players. And I'm gonna talk about outgoings this video. Who's leaving Chelsea and who's most likely to join Chelsea? And also, I wanna pose the question to you guys about Adama Traore, who I've been talking about for a little while now. Anyway, before we do get into today's video, please do like the video. If you're new to the channel, please do also subscribe and click the bell notifications icon and let's get into it right let's get through the admin of the outgoings we all know pretty much who's leaving this january it does well i was gonna say the obvious ones are pedro and jiru to be honest they're really really likely there have been some rumors about an exit for ross barkley but i'm not sure that's gonna happen jiru has come out on in interviews and said pretty much yes I need to go in January because he's playing in the Euros and he's leading the line for France. Giroud's been linked with loads of clubs like Atletico, Madrid, Inter Milan, a few clubs in France, and now Juventus. I guess he could go back to Juventus, link up with Maurizio Sarri again. Sarri likes Giroud, remember, he, he was using him, and if he wants that option, big man in the box and fancies he can do bits out in Italy. I mean, think about it. For Giroud, a guy who's not playing and is in near his mid 30s he's got so many top tier potential locations leon are heavy heavy favorites as well to take him it kind of makes sense him going to france because he could bring his family with him if he wanted to because i'm sure they all speak french including his young kids but i'd love to see him go to one of the big italian clubs both ex chelsea bosses antonio conte and Maurizio Sarri have looked to bring him to their big clubs who are both currently in a title race in Syria. But wherever he does end up in January, it will certainly be exciting. He's also been linked to Premier League clubs like West Ham and Crystal Palace. West Ham for obvious reasons, cause they need like a proper striker to just score more goals than what they've got at the moment. Sebastian Allaire hasn't really been doing it. And Palace, cause you know, I know are you scoring wonder goals now, but it kind of makes sense him going to Crystal Palace. And also that apparently would have something to do with a Wilfred Zaha deal. Anyway, the window opens in a couple of days. It's super exciting and I'll keep you updated where Giroud ends up, but it looks Looks like he's gone. Also, Pedro Rodriguez. It did look like he was heavily linked to Aston Villa. John Terry wanted to bring in some attacking reinforcement and boy could Aston Villa do with Pedro. And that would have made a lot of sense, but apparently Valverde, I know he said he's happy with his squad and Barcelona are doing quite well, but there's been a rumored return for Pedro to come and be a sort of rotational player, especially since Ousmane Dembele has been injured. Pedro has commented on this and pretty much said, man, if Barcelona call me, I'm gone. <laughs> I think Pedro does love Chelsea and appreciates his time here. Obviously, he's won a Premier League, he's won a bunch of other trophies. He's basically tasted English football after winning everything in Barcelona. And he did well in England. Pedro had a good time at Chelsea, so I think he doesn't has no regrets, but let's be honest, he's cooked now. He's not gonna play any real minutes at Chelsea. So if he gets a chance to go back to Spain, speak the mother tongue again, and get a few rotational minutes at Barcelona, I'm sure we'll love that. The dude's probably gagging for some sunshine as well. Staying with the Catalan club, the last couple of years, they've had a sort of back and forth romantic to and fro with Chelsea Brazilian Willian. Now, Willian did confirm, I think last transfer window in the summer, that the only serious interest for him that's come was from Barcelona. Obviously, there were links to Manchester United and a couple of other clubs, but he did confirm, yes, Barcelona had come in for me a couple of times. Willian also went on to say that he's happy at Chelsea and he never really considered it, provided he could stay in London with his family. But obviously, if things weren't all going completely well or if he didn't get the contract or play time or he just didn't fancy London, then of course a Brazilian like Willian would love to go and play for Barcelona. And apparently they're still interested. And again, that comes down to the injury of Dembele. Both Pedro and Willian, and more so Willian, would obviously be incredibly cheap options to bring in for a kind of instantaneous fix 
as well as a lot of quality and experience. La Liga is not as physical as the Premier League. I'm not going to say it's slower, because obviously that's up to people to make that decision, but there's certainly more of a physicality in England, so maybe they could express themselves more in Spain. Willian deals with the physicality of the Premier League fine, in my opinion, and he's still very valuable to Chelsea and Frank Lampard, so I, as a Chelsea fan, wouldn't really want to lose him. Certainly, if Chelsea don't have a plan to replace him with someone who can really do the business instantaneously. And oddly, you'd need a Premier League proven player to sort of offer you that security in that instance. Now, a lot of people want Sancho. I mean, as do I. Football fans want Jadon Sancho at their club. But that's a difficult deal to pull off for many reasons. And if you want instantaneous Premier League experience, you might look to a Wilfred Zaha. Sure, he gets fouled all the time and he hates it, but he's definitely acclimatized to the physicality of the Premier League and generally is a very effective player in the Premier League. And I really would be interesting to see Wilfred Zaha in the top four team again. To be honest, I, I kind of back him more in a Chelsea side than I would a current Tottenham side or a current Arsenal side. I think he could do more at Chelsea and it would be really interesting to see this youthful Chelsea line. Sure, Willian's experienced, but he often keeps the ball very, very wide, looks to combine and cut back, where Zaha will get his head up and he'll be incredibly direct. Much like how Callum Hudson-Odoi plays, obviously Hudson-Odoi is dealing with some sort of uh, confidence problems at the moment. Zaha generally doesn't have that due to his age and experience and that would be really interesting to see him come in. But here cometh the thought experiment from me. Enter Adama Traore, a player that I've been tweeting about for the last week or so, how I think he'd be so so interesting to see at Chelsea Football Club. Traore has 8 league goal involvements this season already for Wolves who aren't an amazingly offensive team, he's got 4 goals and 4 assists, scoring a bunch of those goals against Manchester City. Right, get this stat. Adama Traore completes 4.9, basically 5, dribbles per game in the Premier League. That's like more, that's more than Hazard. That's like Messi. The, no, no, one, no one's dribbling that much. No one is dribbling that much. Also averaging 4.4 in Europe as well, in the Europa League. That is insane. Everyone always saw Traore as this like ridiculously muscular tank that can just fly. The fire, so how is a guy that muscular moving that fast? But that was kind of it. That was it, you know, that he just sort of flew down the wing and didn't have any final products and didn't really know where he was running. But now, the dude has sorted himself out. He can play wing back, he can probably play right mid, he can play right wing, you know, all along the flank essentially. The dude is unstoppable. He can run at two defenders and they won't know what to do. Now he's completing five dribbles per game and he's soaring. Obviously he's incredibly effective on the counter attack, but he's putting in loads of accurate balls, loads of whether they're cutbacks or crosses, he gets right down to the byline and because he's so big and strong, remember I'm not talking about a little technical magician that just does loads of dribbles and is quick. This dude is a tank, if you've seen him he's massive, once he's on the ball you can't muscle him off it. So he is technical, he can score goals, he can assist and he just completes a shed load of take-ons. Prime example being when Wolves just were one against City and he muscled Mendy off the ball to cut back to for Wolves to score the equaliser in that game. He has been magnificent for them in Europe and in the Premier League, the difference maker in already what is a very functional team at Wolves. So I think at Chelsea he could be the perfect sort of, not even plan B because he could play and combine with Chelsea once he's been coached into it, but he would just be there, okay this isn't working, he runs down the wing, he batters everyone, he gets a cut back. You know, Frank Lampard coaches midfielders to arrive at the box, goals. And no one is completing more dribbles per game than Adama Traore. Frank Lampard's talking about he wants, he hates all these passes along the back. He hates these safe passes. He says, if you're a player that can take someone on, I need you to take them on. Dribbles, take-ons, Adama Traore, just saying. I think he'd be a quite an affordable option. He's very, very young. He looks like he's got no problem with the physicality of the Premier League or the WWE. <laughs> Dude also clocks crazy speeds. Basically, at the moment, he looks like he's got it all. In terms of raw power and ability and age, I think he'd be an amazing acquisition 
On paper, he's not necessarily the type of player or player profile that Chelsea might go for with their current project. But maybe, maybe that's the exact reason why they should go for him and offer themselves more options for these games at home where they're not winning, when they really do just need a rocket to fly up the other end, break the deadlock, and then Chelsea can do their thing once they've sort of calmed down and got a goal, and then, you know, they can play the team out of the game with more goals and combinations or whatever. Anyway, what do you think? Because I think it's a good idea. There's no links to Adama Traore, well, not that I've seen. This is something that I'm just speculating and talking about. Everything else I've talked about, the potential exits, and obviously other links I've spoken about before in Transfer News have all been reported by, you know, by outlets or publications and stuff. But this is just me speculating. I'd love to see a link or perhaps a conversation between Chelsea and Wolves about it, but probably won't happen. But I want to know your thoughts. Get down in the comments below and let me know what you're thinking. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new and go subscribe to my other channel, which I'm uploading daily too. Link is in the top of the description. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.